My name is Tim McCoy, and uh, we're here talking to one of the stars of Star Trek The Next Generation, Gates McFadden. Hello, Gates. Nice Hello. to see you. Nice to see you. <laughs> a busy, definitely a busy week for you. Uh, well, weekend, actually. I, I just arrived on Thursday and am leaving tomorrow, so it's been sort of uh, action-packed down memory lane and uh, in Star Trek land here. <laughs> <laughs> so what's it, what was it like to uh, come home to Cuyahoga Falls? It was was better than I had even anticipated. I was excited to come home, uh, particularly since I'm bringing my five-month-old baby. Mm -hmm. It was his first time to see Ohio. I had him breathe that Ohio air, that wonderful Akron Cuyahoga Falls air. And, uh, <laughs> and it was exciting, you know. I don't think he, uh, he grasped the significance of it, but um, he was more interested in the carrots. But I, I, I loved seeing how the city had changed. Mm -hmm. My father, who has uh, been in the construction business, he, he's a hard work consultant, he's took me on a tour of every building that he's been working on for the last 15 years. And uh, my mother is very active in the Akron Women's City Club. She's the president of the club this year and has always been um, someone who's, who's worked with the Coach House Theater, which mm -hmm. is one of the theaters where I, I, I got my start at Falls Maskers and the Coach House Theater. So it's been a wonderful, wonderful trip back made me want to come back more often, which I have which promised. I, yes, I will yes. do this. I will. Now, on the set of uh, The Next Generation, there's a lot of practical jokes that I hear of. And uh, are you any part of these practical jokes? Whenever I can, I am part <laughs> of them. And whenever I can, I am the instigator. <laughs> can you give us an example of one of the greatest practical jokes that's happened recently? Oh, God. No. I, you know, we're always asked this, and the, the greatest ones always escape you at the time. I would say most of the joking around on the set involves um, quips and uh, uh, verbal things where we're, we're, making, we're making fun of the scene before we do it mm -hmm. because it just sort of breaks the tension and we do all sorts of things like that. Um, then there are things that happen with each other off the set as well. I don't know. I mean, they're, they just don't really bear repeating. That's the problem. <laughs> There are things that uh, I think we should just sort of keep to ourselves, but believe me, trust me, they're funny. They were very funny at the time. <laughs> now, I hear also that you're a hamburger finiciato. Okay, what is your favorite hamburger in the whole world? I do love that Swenson's Galley Boy, <laughs> and I have uh, partaken in the Swenson's. Uh, we went, actually, we went both to the Stowe one and to the original one. <laughs> you had to get both in my of them. trip. Uh, no, it's great. I, I didn't make it to Skyway, which is, that's another favorite mm -hmm. during the, those high school years. That was one of my favorites. And I didn't make it to Stoddard's Frozen Custard, which I don't even know if that's still there. I don't there, think it exists. Oh. As far as I know, I don't think it exists. It was, oh, it does. They're telling me it does. It was oh, it heaven does? on earth. Yep. Well, I haven't found I lived in this city for a long time, and I haven't stumbled. I have to find it now. Oh, yeah. You know that. Um, how would you react to this name? Miss Shade. Oh, Miss Alice Shade. She was uh, my second grade teacher, and uh, she was a great influence in my life. Uh, she probably doesn't know this, but she actually was somebody who trusted me a great deal. I, she used to read to us, and she was reading this one book about this little, you know, little tiny person called Poppy mm -hmm. and uh, I was mesmerized by the story and I just couldn't wait to hear it the next day and she let me take the book home overnight which was a complete secret no one else was <laughs> you know granted this privilege and I was so nervous about losing the book but she gave she really trusted me uh, which which probably took a lot of courage on her part and I, I just remember how terrific I thought she was and she was the one that uh, that I said the remark of when we had show and tell, and she asked me what I had done over the weekend, I, I told her I'd danced in a beer joint and won five bucks, <laughs> which uh, actually <laughs> was true, but it wasn't quite like that. I had uh, danced at the local talent show for children at the Moose Club, and uh, I had won, you know, five or seven dollars or something doing a tap dance and singing a song. But uh, <laughs> good. Um, how do you feel about the return of Denise Crosby in the, in the recent, the, the two part of the unification is showing? Well, it's great. I didn't have a chance to work with her. Um, you know, who knows? Maybe, um, I don't know if she'll be back again. I don't know if anything's happening this year again. Not, that, not to my knowledge, but mm -hmm. uh, um, I love to see people come back on the show. It's great. Any more love scenes with Patrick Stewart, or at least sensual? Well, scenes? Patrick and I both would like to have something, you know, that at least continues our relationship 
we, we haven't had as many scenes as we would like together in that way. So we're hoping that there's some episode this year that will happen. We'll, um, we both have requested that. We'll, we'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. I noticed in a, in a recent episode that um, you were teaching Data how to dance. Um, kind of a two-parter. First, what it was like to try to teach him, because I know that you, you did choreograph Labyrinth, so you had to have taught him how to do these steps, and uh, and then give us a little bit, a bit of a background on your uh, tap dancing. Uh, oh, I started tap dancing when I was four or five, and I've done it for a long time. I love it. Brent could do a few steps on his own, and so I knew what those steps were and tried to choreograph in a way that would uh, sort of work those steps into it. And then we also had a, a double at, at another point. Um, it was a lot of fun, and we got to work on the scene together and, and sort of play around with some of the, the lines and the comic timing. It, it was a great, it was a lot of fun working on that, and I, I would love to do some more with that. We had a good time. Now, I know uh, that you've been asked this question a lot lately. But um, uh, the feelings about Gene Roddenberry, um, how do you think that the show would develop now that uh, Roddenberry is, is not involved? Well, I, as I've, I've said when I've been asked that before, I think that it will evolve, and in certain ways I'm sure it will change, and I'm, I'm sure he would have wanted that. If he were still at the helm, it would change and evolve. That's the nature of life, and uh, the, the sec our series certainly evolved from the first show, and uh, and it's a strong enough vision that it will it will continue and it will be successful. I'm sure in whatever form it takes. Mm -hmm. uh, did you watch any of the old Star Trek shows? Have you seen any of? Them? I have now. Yes, uh, since I've been in the in the cast of the new show, I have. And uh, it's a ride. I love watching it. It's a lot of fun. Do you have any particular favorite? Oh no, I, I I love I do love watching the medical stuff because it's, you know, he when he when uh, we've had a few opportunities to spend a little time together, DeForest and myself, and uh, you know his props are, are so they're much smaller and there's there are less of them. There's so many props now in the, in the Beverly's medical bay. I love just seeing the difference of the of the two shows. I was talking to my colleagues earlier about the correlation between um, Bones and Crusher. If they develop the names Crusher, Bones, there's some kind of a, a leeway there. Do you think they I developed always, your name? Because I always that? wondered about that. Nobody has ever, you know, allowed me to pin them down, but I've always thought so. I think so. I'm right. I'm right. <laughs> I was right. Um, how was John, Jonathan Frakes as a director? Because he did direct oh, a couple episodes. Jonathan was great to work with as a director. We had. Uh, so much fun working with somebody who already knows all of our idiosyncrasies and, and we're just very comfortable with him. He, if you're familiar with the sets, as we all are, if we're on them every day, it helps to come up with your ideas of how you were going to shoot something. And it went very smoothly. Mm -hmm. He was, he's very smart and it was, it was a joy to work with him. We all had a great experience. Uh, and you know, I, would, I would hope he would do another one this season. It'd be fun. Well, thank you, Gates McFadden, for uh, spending a few moments with us. My pleasure. Thank you. Okay. And um, we return back to the studio.